All right, what is going on guys? My name is Neo, and welcome to the first episode of something I hope to do more and more often. I think it's something I'm interested in. I think it's something that others will be interested in. Uh, it's my real talk, uh, as you can see right over to my right, right over what there? Nope, the other way, that way. As you can see right there, uh, I'm going to be doing kind of like a talk show thing. Oops. I'm doing kind of like a talk show thing for a little while. Uh, it's kind of just going to be something interesting I do. Uh, we'll see how it goes. But basically I'm going to talk about topics related to gaming and related to just stuff that's kind of important in my life, but mostly centralized on gaming and what it does. And so this is the very first episode I'm kind of introducing what I'm going to be doing. Uh, I'm going to be talking. Of course, I'm going to be always be here whenever I do this. However, I may have special guests sometimes. They may have a webcam, which would be over on the other side of the screen, or they may not, depending. It might just be their voices helping me talk about this stuff. But for today, it looks like, for, at least for now, it's just going to be me while I, while I talk about this stuff. And so the very first thing I'm going to talk about today, it's kind of a broad topic, something that uh, is actually brought up quite a bit. So I'm going to turn that in a little bit. Something that's actually brought up quite a bit. And something that's like very broadly related to exactly what I'm doing, which is gaming pros and cons. The pros and cons of gaming as a whole. And if you're just coming in and you didn't see the title or whatever, or you're watching this from YouTube and you forget what the topic kind of is, it'll always be over there uh, on the left of the gameplay box. That will always be the topic of the day. And then I'm always going to be having some little gameplay while I'm actually doing this. Uh, today I'm going to have League of Legends for a little bit, and then probably my Mince Raft. Mine the Craft, it all depends on what I'm feeling and what people want. So, that's going to, I'm going to be kind of playing it while I talk about stuff. So we're going to go ahead and hop into a game of League Ram. I'm not going to play anything that would really require my attention too hard, because then it would kind of detract from the experience and from me talking, and I feel like too focused on it, and that wouldn't be cool, which, I'm, I mean, I'm doing this to talk. So, uh, we're going to be playing some ARAM up there while I talk about this. So, gaming's pros and cons. Let's start off with, or oh, I don't know. I don't know whether to start off with the pros or cons. I think I'm going to start off with the cons, because that's kind of what everybody, uh, everybody knows. Everybody hears it all the time, everybody knows it, and, uh... I think it'll be cool. Hey, Krunkstar, how you doing today, man? Thank you for tuning in. So, uh, game is pros and cons. We'll start with the cons. So, the biggest thing that I can think off the top of my head about cons is that, like a drug, <laughs> gaming can be addicting. And it's something that you can really get wrapped up into, and if you enjoy it, if you really get into it, it's something that can really focus your time and really, like, get you centralized on it. Something that kind of detracts from everything else you do, and, like everything, if kept in moderation, it's totally good. It's no worry at all. However, it is something that is fun for a lot of people and can be very, very addicting. And so it becomes a problem at that point where people see gaming as this thing. It's like, well, if you get into that, you're just going to stay there and that's not, it's not going to work for you. So it gets hard to be something that people balance out and you know they get addicted to it and they just centralize it and they just put all their focus on it which actually brings me to the next point something else uh, that I wanted to say oh I just literally just lost it I am a genius um anyways okay so kind of coming back to that topic something that's important gaming within itself is a hobby for most people, it's something they do just for fun, and that is totally cool. Gaming just for fun is totally cool. It's no problem, as long as you don't let it consume you, or take up the most of your time. The most, like, all of your time. You have to... Gaming can't be the number one thing in your life. And, I mean, for some people, don't get me wrong, for some people it is. Pro gamers, League of Legends, pros, Counter-Strike pros, Hearthstone, Dota, all these, all these pro players... They're, that's their number one priority, because they have to be good at it, it's their job. And streamers, that is their job, big streamers, not me obviously, but big streamers, that is their job, 
is to game and provide entertainment for their audience, that's a different situation than gaming for fun and having that be something addictive that you do. Now again, gaming in moderation is cool. A couple hours a day is what I try and do. Um, over the summer, I think it'll be, well, I mean, I'm working, so it'll be a little bit less, but... Oh, you game for competition? Like what? What kind of games do you play for? I'm not really gaming for competition, but more so for fun. I play, I play more. I play League for fun, mostly, but then like Counter-Strike I play competitively. Uh, not on a team or anything, but... Um, so again, kept in moderation, gaming for fun is totally cool. Gaming in general is totally cool. You just... It needs to be kept in moderation. Because again, it's something that could consume and take over a lot, a lot of your time and could detract from things such as family time or being with friends or any relationships or boyfriend, girlfriend style or just jobs, school, education, anything else like that is something that it really, really is like, uh, uh, I guess an obstacle to put it away. I play Warface for competition and CF2 for fun. I tried playing Warface. I was really bad at it. I don't think I was able to play Warface. I was really bad at Warface. But, um... It's something that, just in general... Again, moderation. Totally good. A couple hours, as long as you can limit yourself. It's when it starts getting out of control, and obsessive almost, where the gaming starts to become a problem, and I think in a lot of households where parents are restrictive on how much their kids play, or how much you know, time they have, that it starts to become a, a real actual problem for some families. Um, and otherwise than that, you know, it's not uh, too bad, but, you know, just the whole moderation thing. Um, something else that I think I could bring up kind of as a con of, a, of a gaming as a whole uh, or something like, uh... You could argue that, you know, gaming has negative effects on the brain, and, um, like, neurologically, what it can do to you, and there's that whole big controversy on, you know, do violent games make you a violent person, which I think is a topic that I'm going to get into on a different show, I don't know, have, it, have that be a topic for a different show, a different time. But that that's its whole own controversy. So, sorry, I have something really weird on my finger. Um, but, it's like, people could argue that neurologically it does something to your brain. And, which, which, is, which is understandable. I mean, anything you do for sport could technically, um, do, uh, Things neurologically do. It doesn't even. It does not matter at all what. It does not matter at all what it is, and so any anything can really have a neurological effect on you. Um, sports. I mean, there's there's the physical uh, aspects of sports that actually cause problems, like uh, concussions and bodily physical injuries. It's less so kind of neurologically. But in the brain, people say, you know, it changes your brain and it kind of shifts it in this way that is focused around the game and makes you almost feel as though, or makes like the games feel real and the life as like fantasy. It, it kind of like swaps it around. Like, y usually you don't see this happening with anything uh, like League of Legends where it's. Um, all uh, light and uh, you know not realistic, but um, you see it more with games like Call of Duty or Grand Theft Auto. Things that are things that you could see happening in real life. Obviously, League of Legends isn't something that you could see in real life. I don't know. I don't know if you feel that way. <laughs> I don't feel like that's a thing. And that's another part about that whole thing about gaming becoming real is people have different ways to um, people have different people's brains have different thought processes and logic processing 
and they can't, some people can't see um, the difference. Their brains can't actually like comprehend the difference between uh, fantasy video games and what they see in real life. Some, some people's brains cannot process that difference. And whether that's an acquired thing or just something they either inherit or it's just something their brains are, whether it's any of those things is to be like uh, yet decided, but it that that is kind of a real thing, and it does cause problems. I'm not gonna deny. I'm not gonna sit around and say gaming has no negative neurological effects. What I am going to say, however, is that it's not necessarily the games that cause these neurological effects. Even though, I mean, they can. It's not necessarily the case, but it could be. And that's people, that's a lot of parents are like, it's bad for your brain and it's bad for your eyes. That's something else that's really big about all of this. Um, it's talking about like, it's, oh, it's bad for your eyes. Which is true. Completely true. 100% completely true. Um, <laughs> stole that kill from me. Uh, is 100% completely true. It is scientifically proven that having your eyes trained on a screen for long periods of time, especially like LCD panels at a close range, affects your eyes. Like that, that is scientifically proven. I uh, just trolled me. That is scientifically proven. That is a real thing. And. That, that's another thing about that whole idea of keeping it in moderation. You can't sit around for hours in a chair. That's physical downsides. Staring at a screen, which is like your eyes. Staring at a screen for any prolonged period of time, no matter what the screen is, has effects on your eyes and your perception. And perception is actually a big part about that whole con situation. People, and that's why, like, um, say, um, Oh, shit, I missed. Uh, that is why, um, for example, virtual reality is such a controversial area. Because generally, the human brain, that's something, that's like one of those scenarios where, like, the human brain cannot process, like, the whole difference between the real and the fake of it. And um, it actually really, like, causes problems. I'm not gonna deal with it. Um, it causes problems, and um, makes people nauseous. They can't actually like perceive. I guess you could say the distant or the difference between what they're seeing in the virtual reality glasses and what's around them, and that can damage the brain and the eyes. Which, again, completely true. I'm not here to debunk these things. I'm here to just talk about them. That. Is completely true. Oh, got her. Okay, that is completely true. It it it's true. All these things are scientifically proven downsides. It does affect your eyes, and it can actually lead to decreased eyesight. Uh, headaches is a big thing. A lot of what your eyes see are all about you know whether or not you have headaches. It's just uh, charging it everywhere. Headaches are a big problem with gaming, and having such headaches actually does cause serious problems. So, it's not like it's a fake thing, it's not like it's a new thing, it's not like it's anything unreal or unheard of. But, I mean, any screen, so th this is kind of the thing where it's like, it's not necessarily gaming as much as it is screens um, that's that's where the problem comes in the screens themselves and I think that you know sh screens are just um, just in general as a whole they are you know you can't look at them for too long your eyes will get damaged by them and it's and it's and your brain will get damaged by that. It's a tough thing to do. All right, so I think I'll go back and forth between pros and cons in total. 
going to switch over to some pros, I think. Um, one of which being... Okay, nice. That's a combo. One of which being... Um, what is the team? Hold on, I'm sorry. Nope, I'm getting those. Um, I completely forgot, forgot what I was just talking about. Pros of gaming, I think, is what I was going to. Because there are actually quite a few pros. People, I mean, it's like any hobby. There are going to be ups and downs in it. I discussed a couple of the downs, but of course there are ups to it. And the biggest up, I guess, that you could say that comes to mind would be... Um... 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 That it's just enjoyable. It's, it's something that's apart from real life that can take, that can, you know, relieve you from the stress of ordinary life. And that's like a really big thing. This court can keep escaping me, he's good. And that's like, that's usually why people game, is because it makes them happy. Or, you know, it gives them a break from reality. They, they, they're done seeing, like, their troubles of what's happening in, out there in the real world. And they want to just kind of get away from it all and play something that's not really real. Which is totally cool. I mean, I'm sitting here playing League of Legends while I talk about this. This game is nowhere rear Neil, and it's just fun to play. You've got all these characters. I'm this blind monk who has these super... Supernatural capabilities with supersonic waves to see the environment around him. And it's like... Shoot. Okay, I'm getting out of here. I'm gonna attack... Oh, wow. Oh, that quirky CP. Um... I'm gonna attack actually, like... It's, a, it's really fun. I mean, it's just completely... F like fantasy world, none of this could be real. Not a single bit of this whole game really could be real. I mean, I can think of a couple exceptions that maybe could actually happen, but for, for the large majority of it, nothing you see on these screens is going to actually be real. And that's that's where like it comes in as a lot of kind of damage. Um, people like the fantasy of it. I mean. For some people, it's like, what's the difference between watching a Disney movie and playing League of Legends? League of Legends is more violent, given, <laughs> obviously. There's no doubt There's no doubt in that. League is more violent. League is a violent video game. But, given, it's fantasy. It's not real. You're not going to sit around telling your kids not to, um, listen to, or not to watch Disney, are you? Not to watch, like, Mulan or something, because it's kind of violent, no. Why people see the violence in video games is because often it's player controlled. I'm the one controlling this character, trying to fight the enemy, dealing damage to them, uh, kill them, basically. And it really makes it actually a really difficult uh, thing to just process as something different, you could say. So, the whole fantasy thing, it's fun. It's a detraction from the experiences you'd see in real life, obviously. You wouldn't see any of this happen in real life, so that's kind of why it's fun. I just lived out of there with, like, 10 health. It's fun! It's enjoyable. It's fantasy. I, I, I'm basically reiterating the same thing over and over at this point, but, I mean, there isn't really much else to say. And it's really actually, like, that that's a big part of it, is it's just the enjoyment factor. People just like playing video games, and that's, it's as much, they like playing video games as much as they would playing sports. I play tennis, I go rock climbing, I have a 4.0 GPA in school, well, actually I have like a 3.9 line, and, but I still love gaming. Having a 3.9 GPA in school, I'm not, I'm not really a nerd, 
I'm not a complete sport nut or athlete. And so it's like, what what part of all of that, like what makes you a nerd, I guess, or like a, some sort of social outcast? Is it just that, you know, you see all of these, um, you're not doing the normal, you're not doing what, like, society would say is good, being that, um, you, you do well in school, you play sports. And you have relationships, your social life, and friendships. Not not one word of that involves the word gaming. And that's another thing is gaming is becoming more and more of a big thing in our time, in my generation's time. I'm a uh, well, yeah, so it is. Just said it. Um, I'm a shoot. I am a. Soon to be junior in high school. I just graduated my sophomore year. Um, in my generation of time, it's becoming a real big thing, and it's like sports. Football has been around for over over half a decade, I mean at least. So that's not like it's a. Uh, that's not like it's a. Uh, Shoot, help me out here, Sandra. Shoot. It's not like it's uh, an old thing. It's, people haven't been around the gaming scene for so long as, like, sports have, obviously. I don't know. I don't keep up with sports that much, like pro sports. But the NFL is somewhere close to uh, 50 Super Bowls. Again, don't quote me on this. Because my knowledge of pro sports sucks. But it's been going for a lot longer than anything about gaming has. And it makes it um, actually like a really difficult thing to um, deal with. Or, well, to see as like legitimate because. Um, um, here. It just ha it's new. People don't like change. People do not like change. That's it's 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 historically the truth. People do not like change. People do not like change at all. Like historically that is true. People hate change. And that's just the way it has to be, I guess, in order for such things to become more accepted is time. Time is a time is a big part of everything in life. Over time, I, I fully believe that given time, gaming, professional gaming, will be as large, if not larger, than the like NFL pro seat pro scene. I fully believe that. I believe it will be as successful, if not more successful. In, in given enough time, then some of the pro sports scenes, then given the like the NFL's pro scene, I fully do believe that because it's something that applies to a much, much, much larger audience and group of people. I mean, anyone, anyone can game. There is a paraplegic individual. That plays League of Legends. A paraplegic person that can play League of Legends. Alright. A paraplegic person can play League of Legends. Anybody can play video games. Anybody. So, it's like, that, that's kind of a, one of the pros of it, is it applies to so many more people. And it's just such a broader audience. And it's actually like one of those things that's just. I'm dead. So it's just such a huge audience. Anyone can game, anyone. Not everyone can play football. I guarantee you, paraplegics, unless they have really good bionics or 
sections, parts outside of the body that can allow them to do such a thing, none of them will be actually doing football or playing with soccer. I know there are exceptions, but it's like, it's just kind of crazy. Hey Silver Soth, how you doing? Yeah, it has been a while. I haven't been up in a ways. How you doing? So it's just like, it's really kind of tough line to decide between the pros and cons. This game is a good thing, this game is a bad thing. I've gone over a couple things of why it's good and why it's bad. And so, I mean, there are obviously a lot more. I'm going to continue talking about that. My throat's actually starting to hurt, so I might go get a drink. I've been talking for 25 minutes straight here, practically. So, um, uh, there, there, are, there are so much more that I can cover here about all of this, because just gaming within of itself is, she's going in, it's such a crazy whole topic to discuss about, it's, to be honest, Gaming, as a general topic, is a controversy. G gaming is a controversy, within of itself. People don't get it, it's a new thing. Generally new things that have downsides, that the media seems to be as more of a downside, is con it's controversy. And actually, gaming already, I've noticed this in the last year or so, gaming is becoming a lot less of a controversy and more of something you know you actually do and or something that's widely accepted. I've seen a lot of articles on social media sites, Facebook, Twitter, about schools, college schools granting scholarships, $20,000 scholarships for pro League of Legends players, for, for high school athletes, e-athletes, electronic athletes for playing League of Legends. And I can't remember the school, it's not coming to name, I'm sure I can go find it. But it's, it's absolutely, it's just crazy. Ah, oh, made that guy live, damn. Get me out of here, get me out of here. Shoot, this is not good. Um. It's like, okay, yes, I'm just going home. I'm sorry, I'm kind of. Focused a little bit on this right now. Ah, dang. Um, the colleges are granting scholarships for people to play games. It is becoming something that a lot of people are accepting as normal. I mean, I I, I accept it as something normal. I'm. I'm go. I'm all good for it. I think it's totally cool. Again, in moderation. That 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 idea. I'm gonna I'm gonna go into a little bit more depth with that. That whole idea. Everything kept in moderation is the biggest aspect of all of this. That one idea, keeping it in moderation, is the whole foundation of you know arguments for why it's good and arguments for why it's bad. And I'm going to explain that. Moderation, it, keeping it in moderation means, I mean, if you don't know, I'm just going to explain. I'm assuming you all do. It means balance, obviously, like, essentially. It means balance. Keep balancing gaming with the other things of life. School, work, friendships. Balance. And th th that's the whole basis of all of this. And that's why gaming within of itself is like... Uh, well, we're all done for. Um, gaming within of itself is like... You need to keep it, uh, in track. Thanks, dude, for the follow. Uh, you, ne you need to keep it, like, just balanced with everything else. Spend some time gaming, devote time to homework, devote time to going to work, devote time to your friends. It's like, it can't be the focus of your life. Gaming, like, in general, thanks Kyle for following, dude, or, I'm sorry, what does it say, Ryle, Ryle for following, which I appreciate, dude, I hope you know this to be in my stream. It cannot be 
the focus of everyone's everyday life. Because of the actual physical effects of it. And I play video games all the time. However, I do not make it my first priority in life. I, I just don't. My, my first priority in life is my family. My mom, my dad, they're all my priority. They're all my priority. And that's how I want to keep it. Gaming cannot be that. Um, that's why it's such a tricky thing to keep the idea of it, because you have to try and balance it out with everything. <sighs> Man, I really need to get some water. I've been talking for like half an hour straight here. This is my first time doing this. I'm not expecting it to really go that long. So, I think I'm actually... Hmm. I'm going to go for a little bit longer. Because I'm going to upload this on YouTube. And if you're on YouTube watching this, what's up? So I don't want it to be terribly long. I might go for another 15 minutes or something. Talk about a little bit more of it. But I'm going to get into something else. A pro of gaming, like I talked about, is it's becoming more and more of a widely accepted thing. And schools, brand new scholarships... There are tournaments being held all the time. There's actually I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about something that me and my friends were actually discussing doing. There is a thing in, here in America called the HSL, uh, acronym for High School Star League, and basically it's exactly what it sounds like, in that um, it is a it is a high school league for. Uh, High school athletes playing, or e athletes doing e sports like Counter Strike and League of Legends. The winner, you, it's like, it's like the league collegiate thing, but it's for high school, and there are teams that compete, and of, of all high school teams, and the winning team for that year or season or you know, competition gets. Each person on that team gets a $20,000 grant to a college of their choice for playing video games. For being good at playing video games. This is a real thing. This is a very real thing. It's a very real thing. This is a very real thing. I'm gonna die here. It's very real. And that's kind of where a lot of this comes from. <laughs> it is very real. And people get the education to be successful in the rest of their life through college, through high school, and the rest of that. And they can get that applications and those applications that they need for doing something that they love, playing video games. To me, it's honestly no different than, uh... Hold on a second. Um... It's like... They can do that. I mean, you... In, in my opinion, school is like... All before almost everything else you can do at my age. And if you can get school means success in life, basically, if you apply yourself. And if you can get the chance to have that success that school gives you through video gaming, I'm, I'm all for that. It's a skill based environment. It's not a it's not a physically difficult based environment. It's a lot of motor reaction and um, keeping track of all things and strategizing. It's the same way for sports. Football, it, you have so many different plays, play lines, play calls that you have to do on the lines all the time. And so it's like actually very much the same in that manner. It's strategy for that part of the... Uh, it's the strategy... It's just, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just like running on feelings now. 
the strategic aspect of it is very much the same. But there is a actual big physical difference in football. You're out there getting the hell beat out of you by all these other giant guys out on the field and having to be able to catch the ball, throw the ball, defend your teammates. It's a very physically demanding game. Esports or electronic sports, League of Legends, kind of like, are not that way at all. They're very based. They're very much based on your ability to keep track of what's going on, your reaction times for things like Counter Strike. You need to be able to react quickly, and just your motor senses, your motor neurons firing. And it's all more based on your nervous system and like your central nervous system and that er, peripheral nervous system rather than your actual physical capabilities. And I think that that part of it that applies to... That whole part of it applies to people actually very much like me. Because I'm a very small person generally. You wouldn't think it. Many people don't even realize it until I tell them. Because I'm average height. I'm 5'10". For a guy, that's a little bit higher than average actually for a male. I'm 5'10". I don't look it, but I'm 110 pounds. I'm 16, I'm a junior in high school now, as of my graduation tomorrow, and I'm 5'10", I'm this age, and I only weigh 110 pounds. So I, I, I feel nervous with playing a game like football, because, um, I'm gonna actually just switch over games for a little bit, because I don't want to get into another league match, um, I cannot actually play football I feel nervous playing football because of my size and like I love football I think it's a really good sport I would play it if I wasn't the size that I am and my size is actually like a struggle for me in that aspect that's why I play tennis and I do rock climbing rock climbing my size actually gives me an advantage where football it's a disadvantage rock uh, and tennis is just kind of mutual it doesn't really matter what size you are I mean it matters you have to be kind of strong on this I'm not weak I'm tall and lanky, is pretty much it, but I ain't weak. I'm not as strong, certainly, as some of my bigger friends, but I'm not weak. So, but enough about that. It, it applies to me because of my size that I can do well in gaming, where I couldn't do well in um, such things like football. And... Th that's actually a, a really cool thing for me. I've loved gaming for years. I got my first Xbox. We have an, we've had an Xbox a gaming console in my family since I was maybe five. I'm 16. I've been gaming for 10 years of my life. For th like more, more than half of my life, I've been playing video games. And in the last couple of years, I've gotten a lot more into it. But I mean, I've always been playing video games. And so it's kind of like, it's kind of become a part of my life. But again, I'm keeping it out of the focus. I do this for fun. I think it's fun to sit around and talk about this. I think it's fun to play video games that have no basis in real life. It's just like an escape, pretty much. I'm playing Dragon Escape, so it fits in well. Um, I had to just make that joke, it just came to my head. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just a comedic genius. Um, and I actually really like talking about um, like my personal philosophies and things that matter to me in detail. I've always liked doing that. And uh, gaming is one such thing. I've always enjoyed gaming and I feel very strongly about my side. And so I like talking about it. It's that simple. But again, enough about me. I, I keep going on and on about what it is to me. It's something that just in general, game, gaming, oh shoot, gaming kept in moderation is totally cool, and so that's and that's where the, and that's where the actual struggle comes in, just keeping it in moderation. Okay, so I think I'm going about 40 minutes. I think that's about good for actually this little first episode of this. So I hope you guys enjoy it. I enjoy doing it. It's a lot of fun talking. I've always enjoyed talking about such things. Talking has always been something I like doing. I've been a talker my entire life. I think I was literally, my parents tell me that I was talking, like, comprehensively and, like, they could actually understand what I was saying. I was smart about what I was saying since I was two. Or since I was even, like, one and a half. 
And so talking has always been my big thing. That's why I enjoy this. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I did. If you would like to see more, please let me know. I'm going to do more anyway, but if you would like to see more, let me know. If you have ideas for topics that I could talk about that are related to gaming, um, post them in the comments down below. That would be sweet. This is for the YouTube viewers. Um, post them in the comments down below. I will read them, and I will definitely try and talk about all the topics you guys have. I'm talking with a couple people about doing a topic of girl gamers, quote-unquote. I, ha I have someone who is actually interested in talking with me about that whole topic of girl gamers and, like, why it's a bad thing. I, I can't comprehend why that's even a topic. But, um... So that's all that. So let me know if you'd like to see more. I really enjoy it. It's fun. Let um, me you know if there are any games you'd like to see me playing just kind of on the offhand while I'm doing this. And yeah, my name is Neo. It has been fun, guys. The very first episode of my real talk. I hope you guys enjoyed. Have a great day and adios.